PLA and PETG, two of the most common filaments in 3D printing and I'm going to pit them against each other but unlike most other PLA versus PETG videos out there, this is a cubing channel. So the main way I'm going to compare the filaments is to print two 3x3 cubes of exactly the same model but with different filaments obviously and I'm going to review the smoothness, the corner cutting and the stability of both cubes. And there are many brands of these two filaments and every manufacturer is going to have their own formula so the brand that I'm using in this video is just Creality CRPLA and Creality CRPTG. The process of printing these two puzzles was extremely frustrating mostly because at the same time as doing this project I was switching to a metal extruder, a new Capricorn tube, an all metal hot end and it resulted in loads upon loads upon loads upon loads of printer gems. so bad I almost wanted to give up saving my Ender 2 Pro and get a mini Pursa instead. However, after troubleshooting every possible transitioning point between extruder and tube, tube and hot end, hot end and nozzle, I would say that this torturous two weeks actually led me to understand my machine a lot better and I finally got my printer to work again. I did the metal hot end mod partly due to printer durability but also due to the higher temperature demand of PETG which prints at around 240 degrees celsius. This is okay to print once in a while on the stock hot end but with repeated regular prints it might burn the plastic golden tube and release toxic fumes so it's recommended to switch to metal. So for print difficulty I'll be giving the point to PLA. It's just more beginner friendly, prints at a lower temperature and it's less demanding on your hardware and also safer. So my PLA cube actually had some of its pieces deformed during the print, especially the corner pieces, and it actually affected the ability to fit properly. So if you look at some of these pieces with like miscolored parts on them, these are actually due to the pieces becoming concave like during the prints, and I actually just put plastic dust and super glue on top of the concave parts, and then I sanded it flat with a file. And in some cases, the pieces don't even fit well enough for me to even use this piece. So in this case it's not even acceptable and I just have no choice but to print extras. With the PETG cube on the other hand, none of the parts deform. At worst I just had a little bit of under extrusion issues where you can see some of the lines here but it hasn't really been that serious and PLA isn't free from those issues either. By the way I would say that I probably didn't print either plastic in its opt optimum print because I'm still trying to figure out and find the best setting for. So the settings that I use here, okay, it's probably a range but I would say on average the PLA is, is printed on either 195 or 200 degrees celsius but in the future I might just be going with 195. While with PETG, I think some of the lower temperatures like 230, 235 actually cause more printer jamming while I put something higher like 240 and that's when it started to perform really nice. But even then, yeah, it still had a significant bit of stringing and yeah, I actually had to face uh, conflicts because like, in order to minimize stringing, lower temperature and having higher retraction. But then on the other hand, because of the all metal hot, hot end, in order to reduce jamming, the recommendation is just to do the inverse, higher temperature and lower retraction. Overall for print quality, while both filaments can be optimized further, I'm giving the point to PETG just based on the result I got. I also wanted to do a strength test but firstly I got lazy and secondly some of my PLA parts broke and I had to rely on extras again but not on PETG. I just want I just want to declare PETG the winner in this category and by right there are two types of strength tests. One is the raw material strength and the other is layer adhesion. In this case it's more of a layer adhesion issue. The topic is actually quite a complicated topic that I have much more to say on. I, I would just want to save some video time here and I'm just going to say when it comes to functional parts pieces are going to face forces in all sorts of directions and you're only as strong as your weakest link. Fresh out of the printer, both cubes were pretty terrible with a lot of friction and they needed to be broken in but uh, the PETG cube actually broke in a lot nicer. And while I'm not filming this section in, in the full setup, I would say the PETG cube is a lot more stable. While the PLA cube is much catchier. The center caps were also a problem uh, because like, in order to minimize center cap popping, I initially wanted to go with an inverted version of RC Pongo's dovetail design and uh, rather than going with a normal dovetail, I actually inverted it because I wanted to have a bit more space to tension the screw a bit looser but I soon discovered a loophole which is you can slide it back, you can just unhook and then the cap just comes off 
so the caps actually pop much more easily than the whole point of the design is supposed to be and I pretty much have to get around this issue by gluing a magnet underneath the cap which will attract the screw so this helps to minimize the cap sliding around and holds it in place which like, I would say that this problem is actually much worse with the PRA cube as compared with the PTG cube which ever since I put the magnet this one actually isn't annoying to use oh this one is probably still has a bit of cap sliding issues now I've added magnets and stickers to both cubes and use them a bit. The general trend I got from the first impression still stays with the PETG cube being more stable while the PLA cube is just a little bit more flexible. When it comes to the corner cutting of both cubes, I would say that they cut around the same, around 4 fifths of the cubie. However, with the PETG cube, the corner cutting is much more evenly spread. While on the PLA cube, the smaller angles are more effortless to cut but they do climb rather exponentially when the angles get bigger. When it comes to reverse corner cutting, the PLA cube is the better one of the two. You can actually cut a little bit here. Although I would say neither cube cuts that much. But I do think the PLA cube does cut a little bit more. However, when it comes to actually getting random catches in the saw due to the more stable feel of the PTG cube, I do feel that this one actually gets fewer like random catches whereas this one gets quite a bit more and because of that I do think I can solve the PTG cube just a bit faster as well as with a more consistent timing whereas this one if I don't get any random catches in the solve I can get quite good timings as well but it can also swing in the other direction where I get more catches in the solve overall I would say that neither cube is going to match up against something that's mass produced so just to give a impression I can solve a, a normal mass produced 3x3 in around 15 to 16 seconds Whereas with this one is around probably 18 to 19 and this one is probably one second slower so maybe 19 to 20. These are just rough numbers, I didn't really do like super big sessions and pinpoint an exact number. Just from basic piece design, although this is not really related to PLA versus PTG, it's built like an outlong, it has a double anchor. And also it takes quite a lot of references from the fork. Yeah, in addition to using the Chi core and the fork tree center stock design, I also punch a hole right in the center piece. And yeah, just to show you that it is the same model. Let me just show you the pieces of the PLA cube. The edges have a magnet that's press fit here. So I designed the piece with a hole and then I just push a magnet in. Whereas the corners have holes similar to the main 3x3. Uh, but the magnet is actually right, right here. I actually designed a magnet slot inside one of these holes and then I slide the magnet right in and just drop some glue in there. And lastly, this one, I didn't really do this mod because I wanted to make a fair comparison. But at the same time, I also don't want to mod both cubes, but I purposely designed the base of the edge and the base of the corner to be flat so that I can glue magnets on and there's actually some room to mod core corner magnets and repelling edge magnets into this cube. And also, seeing how empty the centerpiece looks, there's also room to mod mag left in. So overall, I would end up saying the same thing with what most other 3D print channels would say, which is PTG is more temperature resistant, more flexible, therefore absorbs shocks better, and it's overall a better material to print functional parts. And a cube is pretty much a group of moving parts held together. So this pretty much makes PTG the better material to make speed cubes. And I'm not the first one to say so. PLA on the other hand has more variety of like, filaments on the market. It doesn't demand higher temperatures to print and it's fairly usable if you're using it to just like do art like thin sculptures in PLA and I would say it's still a really good material to do that. Going forward, I might make composite cubes where the internal pieces and some tin parts requiring more strength are PETG, while the center caps and the larger outer pieces which automatically would be stronger by part size alone can be printed in PLA 